Assalamu alaikum. Today we will uh, finish the last topic in chapter 9 of unit 3. Uh, so uh, we will talk about how the heart pumping process is regulated. Um, there are uh, two um, types of, uh, of regulation of the heart pumping. The first one is the intrinsic regulation of heart pumping. Uh, which we call the Frank Starling mechanism of heart pumping regulation. It is actually the intrinsic ability, okay, or internal ability of the heart to adjust or adapt to increasing volumes of the venous return or the inflowing, inflowing blood from the body. So the more a blood volume uh, returned from the body into the uh, into the heart, the more heart pumping, uh, which is actually uh, done by the heart tissue itself, uh, it doesn't require any extrinsic um, control. And that actually lie within physiologic limits. So these increasing volumes should be within physiologic limits. So, in Arabic, we will talk Frank Starling mechanism, or what is the regulation of the heart. There is the ability of the heart to adjust to increases in the volumes. Okay, إذا أي زيادة في the volume of blood اللي جاي على القلب من الجسم. Okay, the القلب directly وبشكل مباشر بيزيد ال ال الضخ قوة الضخ نتيجة لهذه الزيادة حتى يتكيف مع هاي الزيادة. طبعا ضمن حدود فسيولوجية أكيد مش إلى ما لا نهاية زيادات في the volume هاي. So, um, as we said, within physiologic limits, the heart pumps almost all the blood, okay, that comes or returns uh, from the body by veins, by the veins. by superior and inferior vena cava. بيجي عنا venous return اللي هو that fills ال right atrium and then the right ventricle. طبعاً طبعاً هذا اللي هو بصير في stretch لا اللي هي هاي الميكانيزم the mechanism of of intrinsic control of Frank Starling mechanism is that the muscle the muscle of the heart stretches and when when it stretches it uh, is brought to an optimal degree of overlap between the actin and myosin. And that optimal degree of overlap, okay, will induce more force of contraction or more tension. And that's actually a characteristic of not only the cardiac muscle, but also in the skeletal muscle. And to remind you with this principle, this is a graph obtained from a skeletal muscle sarcomeres which depicts the relationship between the length of the muscle okay and the tension as a percentage of maximum so uh, as as you see here the more reduced length yani reduced stretch in other words in the uh, muscle fiber between the muscle fibers, the actin and myosin, the less tension that can be uh, brought from contraction. However, when we increase the length, okay, when we increase the length of sarcomere, that means when we stretch the muscle or sarcomere more, when we stretch it more up to a limit of course we get a maximal degree of tension or of contraction okay هون تقريبا up to 120 
uh, percent of the uh, sarcomere length. We can see an optimal overlap that produces most tension. الزيادة أكثر من هيك will produce the opposite effect رح تقلل التنشن فإذا عملنا stretch more than الفسيولوجيك limit أكثر من ذلك بصير في عنا العكس بصير ما في أصلا overlap بالمرة okay and that will not produce a good interaction بين الأكتن والميوسين filament so that will reduce very low tension حتى بوصل إلى الزيرو لما ما يكون في any cross bridges يعني ما في overlap during the contraction the principle in the cardiac muscle is similar يعني في up to a limit لما نعمل stretch لل heart muscle fibers we bring the fibers into an optimal degree of overlap and that will produce an optimum contraction or tension اوكي وهذا هو اللي بيحدث كل ما نزيد الفوليوم اللي بدنا نعبي فيه الهارت رح يزيد الستريتش اب تو ليميت طبعا هذا الستريتش بيساعد القلب انه يعمل مور فورسفول كونتراكشن اوكي بسبب الاوبتيمال ديجري اوف اوفرلاب انذر A kind of intrinsic regulation is that the stretch of the atrial muscle, okay, here in the right atrium, it has an influence on the heart rate. لانه بالright atrium في عنا fibers اسمهم ال SA node. Okay, ال SA node tissue مجموعة من ال fibers اللي هي مش وظيفتهم ال contraction. رح نحكي عنهم later. لكن وظيفتهم to generate the electrical current in the heart, okay, the depolarizing current. So the stretch only to stretch the fibers of the right atrium will increase the heart rate by 10 to 20 percent. Increasing the heart rate, زي ما بنعرف, بيزيد ال طبعا الكارديك اوتبوت او الكارديك اوتبوت اللي هو ايش هو الناتج اللي بيطلع من الهارت اوكي كم فوليوم بيطلع من الهارت في في البمب او الهارت بيت الوحده اوكي اذا ذا اكسبلانيشن اوف فرانك ستارلينج ميكانيزم It lies within the heart tissue itself. The more you stretch the heart muscle, the more you get contraction, or the better there will be better contraction. وهذا اللي نسميه Frank Starling law. Okay. بالإضافة إلى إنه the stretch of the right atrial muscle نفسها it increases the heart rate. And that actually also increases the heart pumping by increasing the heart rate and the cardiac output. Okay. طبعاً نذكركم ب the cardiac output. Cardiac output. رح نحكي عنه طبعاً أكثر لما نحكي عن the vascular system. The cardiac output عبارة عن the stroke volume. Okay. Times the heart rate. Okay. هذا هو ال ال cardiac output اللي هو كم ناتج أو ال volume اللي بضخه القلب في ال طبعا بنفس ال heart beat الوحدة مضروبة ب نبض القلب وسرعة نبض القلب هيك بيعطينا كم ال output في minute. Okay. كم ال في مينت أو كم لتر في مينت. Okay. We express the ventricular function as part of the heart heart function in two ways. The first way, okay, is by measuring the left mean atrial pressure and the right mean atrial pressure, and see the relationship with the stroke work. Okay, the ventricular stroke work. 
So um, here we can see the relationship between the increasing pressures of the of the atrial pressure. Okay, uh, it describes the increase in the volumes of blood returned. Okay, from the system into the atrium. So the more blood coming into the atrium, the higher mean atrial pressure. So the more atrial pressure we see for both curves, for the left and the right uh, uh, atrium, we see more stroke work, okay, more work, which means uh, more, uh, of course, more contraction or, and more uh, pressures, okay? Uh, if we look at the other type of, uh, of curves that also expresses the frank startling mechanism of the heart, we can see that uh, if we look at the uh, relationship between atrial pressure again on the x-axis, but here the ventricular output as the y-axis, we see that uh, the more atrial pressure we have, yani, uh, meaning that we have more blood in the atrium, okay? Uh, that means there will be more ventricular output uh, for the left ventricle, for the red curve, and also for the right ventricle. If كل ما يزيد قيم ال pressure في الاتريوم منلاحظ زيادة في ال ventricular output measured uh, as liters per minute. Okay, so uh, this is actually true for both right ventricle and for uh, left ventricle. Okay, so uh, this is what we call the ventricular output curve. So this is the uh, ventricular output curve and this is the uh, ventricular function curve. Function curve because it measures the stroke work. زي ما عرفنا الستروك ورك اللي هي بتعتمد على البرشر تنشن اوكي والديوريشن اوف تنشن او اوف كونتراكشن سو ذا سيكند تايب اوف ريجوليشن از ذا كنترول باي ذا Uh, autonomic nervous system which is considered extrinsic way of control so this is an external regulation from outside the heart muscle which is mainly uh, performed this control by the uh, autonomic nervous system by either the sympathetic nerve fibers or the parasympathetic nerve fibers by the sympathetic nerve fibers and Usually, there is uh, a constant tone of sympathetic uh, stimulation for the heart. This stimulation can uh, work on both the heart rate and the contraction force. Okay, and we will see how can the sympathetic stimulation affect heart rate and contraction. So, it can increase the heart rate from normally 70 Uh, beat per minute into 180 to 200 uh, beat per minute okay so the increase is uh, can be very high the increase in the heart rate due to sympathetic stimulation of course uh, it depends on the strength of the sympathetic stimulus uh, at the same time sympathetic stimulation also can increase the force of contraction to about twofold, twofold in normal. Okay, then the sympathetic stimulation can increase the speed of the heart from 70 to 200. Okay, the uh, force of contraction or the force of contraction can increase to uh, uh, twofold. Okay, now the this These two effects, so what will increase in the heart rate or in the force of contraction, can increase the volume that is pumped and also the ejection pressure. So not only the volume pump, but also the ejection pressure. On the other hand, 
if the sympathetic nerves were inhibited, okay, this will reduce, okay, the, both the heart rate and the strength of contraction, resulting in reduction of pumping by 30%. يعني آه هذا بدل على إنه السيمباتيك ستيمولس الموجود بشكل طبيعي بيزيد الفورس أوف بامبينج عن لو ما كان في سيمباتيك بثلاثين بالمية من البامبينج كابابيليتي أوف ذا هارت فلما نخسر السيمباتيك ستيموليشن مننزل ثلاثين بالمية من البامبينج نخسر 30% من البامبينج إذا خسرنا السيمباثيك ستيميوليشن. Uh, on the other hand, there is a parasympathetic vagal stimulation. Okay? The parasympathetic stimulation affects the heart rate. Okay? And also affect contraction. But the effect on heart rate is stronger than the, the effect on uh, on the contraction and now we will see why so strong parasympathetic stimulation by the vagus nerve عشان هيك نسميها vagal لانه ال vagus nerve بغذي ال heart so the heart is supplied by vagal okay fibers that are parasympathetic they carry parasympathetic fibers strong stimulation can stop the heart Okay, for few seconds, يعني can stop the heart beats, يعني the heart rate is zero. لكن خلال seconds برجع إلى it will return to normal. Even with the يعني يعني خلينا نحكي maintained strong stimulation, بصير في skip. بعدين it will return to 20 to 40 beat per minute إذا بصير في skip بعدين على طول برجع إلى 20 إلى 40 beat per minute that's when there is strong stimulation of the vagus it will cause a decrease in the strength of contraction by 20 to 30 percent so you can see here the effect on the heart rate is very way 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 stronger than the effect on the strength of contraction the overall reduction of pumping due to reduction of heart rate and contraction is 50 percent okay it, the overall reduction can be 50 percent of pumping why are the uh, vagal stimulation or uh, vagal signals are more powerful on the heart rate than the contraction? Because the vagal fibers are distributed mainly to the atrium where there is the uh, pacemaker of the heart rate. Uh, and that's why the effect is more where on the rate which is generated in the atrium in the SA node that we will talk about shortly so that's why there is more effect and there is less supply uh, in the ventricular muscles so that's why we see the effect more robust on the heart rate than on the contraction however however overall effect overall effect on the heart pumping by the vagal stimulation from both contraction and heart rate is large, it's 50%. So this is the uh, autonomic nervous supply of the heart, heart which shows the vagal fibers coming into the uh, electrical rhythm uh, places of the heart which are the SA node and the AV node, SA sinoatrial node and the atrioventricular node, okay? Uh, also, we have sympathetic supply for each the nodes and the uh, ventricular muscle fibers. So the sympathetic, as you can see here, the effect is uh, strong for both the rate and for the contraction. Uh, unlike the vagal, effect is higher 
for the uh, uh, for the SA node and the pacemaker of the heart. That's why it affects a stronger uh, to a stronger limit the uh, rate of the heart than the contraction. So um, in this graph, you can see the cardiac output curve. This is a cardiac output curve. So it is another kind of um, cardiac function curve, okay? But uh, it represents the cardiac, okay? And not the um, ventricular. So this represents the heart and not a specific uh, uh, place in the heart. So it represents the whole heart. Uh, it shows that the more we have right atrial pressure, okay, the more we have right atrial pressure, the more we have cardiac output, okay, but also shows uh, that that effect or that relationship uh, within different levels of sympathetic stimulation or parasympathetic stimulation. So you can see that the more sympathetic stimulation we will have uh, the curve uh, uh, we will have like a shift into the uh, lift for the curve and also we will have more cardiac output so more increase in the cardiac output and more uh, maximum cardiac output for the curve However, in the normal uh, sympathetic stimulation, you see the curve uh, lying in the middle, the normal cardiac output, we get a normal cardiac output. With zero sympathetic stimulation, there will be reduction in the maximum cardiac output, even with more or increasing right atrial pressures. Uh, with parasympathetic or stronger parasympathetic stimulation, we see a reduction in the uh, cardiac output than the zero sympathetic or even uh, the uh, strong parasympathetic. Okay, so you will see reduction in the cardiac output. Uh, it is the least when there is a strong parasympathetic stimulation. And the maximal uh, cardiac output is with maximum uh, sympathetic stimulation with regard to the uh, right atrial pressure, which represents uh, the um, volumes of venous return and also represents the fa Frank Starling, but the effect of the autonomic uh, nervous system control, okay, with a background of Frank Starling mechanism, because we the increase in right atrial pressure Will cardiac output relationship between them? He uh, expresses the Frank Starling mechanism. Like when we see different stimulation, we can see also the extrinsic stimulation, the effect of. So here is a graph showing both extrinsic and ex intrinsic uh, regulation of the uh, cardiac output, which represents the, the output from the whole heart. Okay. Uh, from the uh, atria and the ventricles into the, uh, of course, uh, our top, the left ventricle, into the pulmonary trunk, the uh, right ventricle. There are uh, other factors, uh, the other than the autonomic nervous system, which are the levels of important ions uh, for the heart, which are the potassium and the calcium ions. For potassium ions, they are very important because excess potassium in the extracellular fluid of the heart will make the heart more flaccid and dilated and will slow the heart rate. Okay, it will make the heart more uh, uh, hard or uh, make it uh, less likely to obtain depolarization or to make or to get a depolarization okay uh, so also the excess
can also affect conduction between the atrium and the ventricle through uh, a bundle of fibers called AV bundle. Okay, so also the contractions they become weaker. Okay, they become weaker uh, because it's harder to have depolarization. لما نكون the level of the potassium عالي, okay, منكون إحنا uh, في the more negative uh, membrane potential, which is harder to make an action potential, okay. بنصير uh, نبعد أكثر أكثر عن the threshold, okay, more repolarized or hyper. Uh, polar, uh, hyper uh, polarized, okay, hyper polarized. So this will make it more difficult to have contraction. E even when when having contraction, it will be weaker. So uh, that uh, the excess of potassium ions is very uh, serious uh, condition, okay. شان هيك الهايبركاليميا كتير dangerous للجسم. اللي هي لما يكون في عنا high potassium levels in the plasma بتعمل arrhythmias okay وخلل في rhythm of the heart أما الكالسيوم ions الكالسيوم ions they affect the function of the heart in the opposite direction that the potassium does الكالسيوم ions excess calcium ions they will induce more contractions, which are uh, referred to spastic contractions. Uh, however, the deficiency of calcium causes the opposite con condition. It's, it's similar to what high potassium causes. It causes flaccidity. Okay? Uh, it is obvious the role of calcium in contraction is very important. Uh, which actually regulates the uh, interlinking, the over overlapping and binding between the fibers, which will cause the shortening of the muscle and induce the contraction process. So we know the importance of calcium. But physiologically, it is hard to have a condition of excess calcium or low calcium because calcium is regulated uh, in our body system within a very narrow range okay so it is very rare to have uh, such effects clinically so uh, increase in calcium or decrease in calcium okay there are uh, hormones that control the calcium ions uh, level uh, temperature also affects the heart function so by increasing body temperature, the heart rate uh, is going to be increased uh, and uh, that's because of the permeability of the uh, ions, uh, of the uh, membranes, plasma membranes, uh, the permeability increases so that will induce even faster uh, flow of ions and uh, this will induce uh, an increase in the heart rate in the pacemakers and in the uh, conductive uh, system. Uh, in contrary, a reduction in body temperature decreases the heart rate uh, for the same reason. Uh, the permeability or in the plasma membranes also are going to be reduced uh, because of the uh, reduction in the body's temperature. Okay, sometimes in hypothermia, uh, the heart rate can be affected very badly, uh, uh, very seriously actually. Uh, also, the contractile strength of the cardiac muscle tissue is enhanced uh, by moderate, مش, يعني, high, moderate increase in temperature. Uh, however, prolonged elevation of the temperature uh, can cause weakness uh, in the contractability or contraction ability of the heart and that's why uh, the temperature regulation of the body is very important for the function of the heart, for the normal functioning uh, of the heart. Now we will start with the next chapter. Uh, we will talk about the rhythmical excitation of the heart. Okay. 
uh, we will uh, explain the uh, pacemaking of the heart who is responsible uh, for making the heart rhythm okay so uh, the there are uh, specialized uh, excitatory uh, system and conductive system in the heart uh, first the sinus or the sinoatrial node uh, it is located uh, in the wall of the right atrium then high sinus هي structure اللي مكون من modified cardiac muscles that doesn't have contractile activity it has instead a conductive uh, an electrical sorry uh, electrical rhythm generation activity so it generates uh, an electrical uh, current or action potentials uh, with a special or specific rhythm Okay, so the function of these structures is not contraction. It is generation of the cardiac rhythm. Okay, so uh, the automatic rhythmicity, okay, uh, is means that the cardiac fibers has the ability to self-excite. So these structures, the sinoatrial node, and there is another node, uh, that is called AV node or atrioventricular node. These structures have the ability to have automatic rhythmicity, which means that these fibers are able to self-excite themselves, okay, to generate action potential without any stimulus from outside these fibers. Then, hadolal sinuses, okay, he first sinoatrial node. موجودة في جدار ال right atrium ال ال main أو ال ال وظيفة الرئيسية لها إنها مش تنقبض وتنبسط مثل بقية عضلات القلب بل إنها تبعث أو تقوم بصناعة رذم اللي هو صناعة electrical current signals كهربائية أوكي فبتصنع الأكشن بوتنشال اللي بينتشر من هذه الأماكن أوكي ينتشر إلى بقية أجزاء الهارت كله أوكي in this diagram we can see the uh, rhythmical uh, structures and also the autorhythmical structures as well as the conductive system so uh, we have the first the sinoatrial uh, node here okay the sinoatrial uh, node uh, which actually has the potential to self excite okay itself and it has self excitation so it generates action potential automatically and this this action potential can spread through the fibers of the conductive uh, system okay uh, we also have another node another structure of spe specialized cells that has autorhythmic uh, capability which are the AV node the atrioventricular node the SA node زي ما انتو شايفين the uh, place or the position is a little bit lateral to the opening of superior vena cava on the superior posterior uh, wall of the atrium and the AV node lies between the atrium and the ventricle okay and uh, as the uh, sinoatrial node or SA node generates an action potential uh, that travels in the internodal pathways which are uh, specialized conductive fibers that carries the action potentials okay from the atrium into the AV node uh, in the AV node uh, we will have uh, a slight delay okay that will allow the atrium to contract ahead of the ventricle okay because the SA node is connected to all the muscle fibers in the atrium so the SA node is directly connected into the muscles of the atrium but not connected to the ventricle 
as we said before, the atrium has a syncytium that, that is separate from the ventricular syncytium. The only way of the action potential can travel from SA node to the ventricles is to cross the AV node and then uh, another uh, specialized fibers called the AV bundle, okay, uh, which has two branches for left and the right side of the heart. And then the uh, another type of branching uh, of these conductive uh, structures that are called Purkinje fibers that carries the signal from the bundle, the AV bundle, into the whole uh, ventricles, the whole structure or cardiac muscles of the ventricles. So uh, the, in the AV node and AV bundle, there will be also delay that will allow the atrium to contract ahead of the ventricle, which will allow time for the ventricles to be filled after atrial contraction. And after being filled, while the ventricles are relaxed in the diastolic phase, then contraction will pump the blood that was filled in, inside the heart. So that's actually what we need. We need the heart to be filled enough in order to pump uh, an adequate volume of blood. Then, the SA node will produce action potentials. Okay, in an autorhythmic way, يعني بشكل أوتوماتيكي. وهذا الأكشن بوتنشال بينتقل بشكل مباشر إلى ال cardiac muscles of the atrium, the two atrii. لأن كل الأتريم connected electrically, متصل كهربائيا. However, to get the signal or the action potential, حتى نحصل على action potential ينتقل من ال SA node إلى ال ventricles. لازم يمر في ال conductive system اللي بيعبر ال AV node okay another structure that also can be autorhythmic ممكن لحاله يصنع رذم okay بعد هيك AV bundle okay كمان conductive system بعد هيك Purkinje fiber كمان conductive uh, بينقلوا ال action potential إلى كل خلايا ال ventricles بعد هيك بنفس الوقت فبصير الانقباض في ال ventricles at the same time لكن atrium ahead of ventricles okay. So uh, in this figure we can see action potentials of both the, the sinus nodal structure of the heart uh, in the red curve and also we have an action potential of the ventricular muscle fiber and we talked previously uh, about the ventricular muscle fiber action potential the phases of the of this action potential and the events that occur in each phase for the uh, sinus nodal uh, structure or action potential we can see that uh, it's striking how uh, the resting membrane potential is different. Uh, you can uh, see that the action potential for the ventricular muscle fiber is way more negative than the resting potential of the uh, sinus uh, nodal structure. So um, it is about minus uh, 44 or 45. Uh, whereas for the ventricular muscle fiber, it's about minus 90. Um, the reason for the uh, high difference between the resting membrane potential of sinus and the cardiac ventricular muscle fiber is that the membrane of the sinus uh, nodal structure is more permeable to sodium and also calcium. So uh, the high permeability for sodium neutralizes sodium entry into the cell, neutralizes the negativity and makes it less uh, for the sinus, uh, less than the ventricular. Okay. Uh, you know that the ventricular uh, muscle fiber, the uh, permeability is for, for potassium instead. Potassium uh, leads the uh, uh, going out of the cell uh, makes the cell more negative. 
Okay. Um, if we look at the um, action potential initiation in the uh, sinus nodal structure, we said before that it is autorhythmic. That means the generation is automatic. Uh, the action poten potential is generated automatically. And the reason for that is uh, the, before, because of the permeability for sodium is high in the sinus nodal uh, structures, entry of sodium will make the uh, cell membrane gets uh, less negative uh, and it reaches the threshold. Uh, uh, you know, uh, when it reaches to the th threshold, it reaches because of the uh, entry of sodium, this slow entry of sodium uh, due to the opening of uh, sodium leak channels. After uh, the membrane potential reaches the threshold, then the action potential will start. But the action potential here doesn't have the fast zero phase that we see in the ventricular muscle fiber because uh, at the resting membrane potential of about minus 44, the fast voltage, sodium voltage gated channels are going to be inactive. At this voltage and for this long, uh, the sodium, fast sodium channels are inactive. So they won't be open when the voltage uh, reaches the threshold. Instead, uh, calcium, slow calcium sodium channels will open. And opening of calcium channels uh, and sodium will lead to uh, the depolarization phase, which is not fast as we see in the ventricular muscle fibers because it's not because of the sodium, fast sodium channels. Okay, uh, and these channels, slow channels, will open for, uh, uh, for a very short time and then uh, they will, uh, of course, be inactivated. And once they get inactivated, Potassium channels will start to open, causing the uh, repolarization phase. Okay, and even uh, we can get a hyperpolarization phase instead of uh, uh, polarization. We can get hyperpolarization uh, if, if the potassium channels, uh, because the potassium channels persist uh, opening. Okay, and the potassium uh, flow outflow continues until we have the hyperpolarization state. Uh, after that, the potassium channels will also close and then the slow uh, sodium, of course, sodium flow will start again. Okay, uh, the slow sodium channels, the leak channels for sodium will start leak sodium, okay, inside the cell causing the membrane potential to reach the threshold again, and then uh, slow calcium sodium channels will open, open, causing a new action potential. So uh, why does the hyperpolarization state does not last for a long time? Because the potassium channel are going to be uh, inactivated and closed, uh, and the sodium channel will open and cause the membrane to reach to the threshold. So for the sinoatrial uh, rhythmic excitation, we have less, uh, uh, less resting membrane potential, less negative membrane potential, uh, because the, uh, the membrane of the sinoatrial structure are leaky to sodium and potassium. Uh, although uh, they have three types of channels same, similar to the ventricular muscle fibers, the fast sodium, slow sodium, calcium, and potassium, but the fast sodium at the um, uh, less negative membrane potential, they get inactivated. So, so they don't open for the phase zero. Okay. Uh, instead, the uh, slow channels for uh, sodium and calcium open causing the depolarization and then uh, the uh, of course because they are slow they are slow to develop the action potential and slow to uh, to uh, uh, overcome or finish the uh, the action potential 
and uh, what causes the repolarization also the opening of the potassium channels which will cause the membrane to go back to the resting potential and can also be hyperpolarized if a persistent uh, potassium uh, outflow uh, uh, was the case so we will see hyperpolarization but this will not last for long because uh, the potassium channel will close automatically and then uh, the sodium leak channels will actually leak sodium to inside and uh, change the membrane potential uh, more to the less negative uh, uh, until it reaches th threshold and another action potential will start. So um, in the next lecture, we will talk about the, uh, the pathway of impulse transition. So after uh, generation of the impulse in the SA node, because of its self-excitatory nature, the action potential will travel in the whole atrium because it works as a syncytium and it is electrically connected, as we said, everywhere in the atrium will be depolarized. However, to, in order to uh, uh, transmit the signal from the atrium to the ventricle, it should pass through the AV node, okay? It should pass through the AV node uh, uh, through, uh, pathways, through pathways that are called internodal pathways. So they will transmit the impulse. Only these pathways uh, from of the conductive system will uh, will transmit these signals from the SA node. Uh, they will travel to the AV node, the atrioventricular node, which lies uh, between the atrium and ventricle. Okay, you uh, uh, can see that it's uh, a little bit uh, close to the tricuspid uh, valve. Okay. Uh, and uh, actually there is a delay and we will discuss the reason why there is a delay in conduction of AV but we know the uh, physiological relevance of this delay uh, the, the relevance of delay in the AV it can uh, allow the atrium to contract before contraction of the ventricle so that we can allow uh, enough filling adequate filling of blood in the ventricles before it con can contract. And we will talk about the Purkinje fibers and the one-way conduction through the AV bundle of Hess. And uh, that's uh, all for today. Thank you.